All right, let's continue. Here we have another example related to linear transformation. Let R be a transformation that maps R2 onto R2. And uh, it says that that rotates each point 90 degrees counterclockwise counter about the origin. Show that R is a linear transformation. Okay, so, all right. So here, number one is, I will show that actually here we have two standard unit vectors. The first one is E1, actually the next page will give this as a theorem. Those coordinates are one, zero, and second one, E2, zero one okay and also we know that if you just pick any vector from two dimensional space that is x and y you can just write it as x times e1 plus y times e2 right so now just if you remember from trigonometry right it says at 90 degrees so uh, Last time I'm yapping. Okay. Sorry. So here we have Y, here we have X. And uh, if you're talking about this vector, zero, one, right? If you just rotate this 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees, let's say that is R theta, or actually it's just 90 degrees. Um, actually here, what our theta is, let me just write here, our theta is 90 degrees. Just this R theta of one zero, it is, what is it? It's just zero one. Right? And how about, R, that is theta, theta of zero, one. How about this vector? If you just rotate 90 degrees, it comes here, right? So that is equal to negative one, zero. Okay. In general, actually, when you just rotate 90 degrees, if this one is 90 degrees, that is x, y, actually, here we will have this vector, that is minus y that is x okay so anyway so that is the what is it mapping of this x y so now if you just write this as a matrix you can just write it here as let's say two by two matrix and here we have x and y right so how can i get y here so i should we should have here zero we should have negative one and here we have x, so this should be one, this should be zero. So I can just write it as, what is it? Matrix A times, here we have vector V. What is the question? V transformation that rotates each point nine degrees clockwise about the origin show that R is a linear transformation. Since it is a matrix transformation, A, V, and we have just proved that so this theorem, right? It is a linear transformation. Because if you just multiply any point by this matrix, it rotates 90 degrees clockwise and, and counterclockwise. Okay, now here, this idea actually in general is true. I'll just give this as a theorem now. Let T be a transformation that actually maps vectors from Rn onto vectors Rn. Then T is a matrix transformation. That's the first conclusion. And the number two is more specifically T equals TA, where A is the M by N matrix, whose actually columns are this T of E1, T of E2, and dot, 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 T of EM. And such matrix A is called the standard matrix of the linear transformation T. Okay. So here, you see, this theorem is saying that if this transformation is a linear transformation, and here immediately we can draw this conclusion then it is a matrix transformation it means that 
to get actually a vector from Rn into this Rn, just we need to multiply this vector from Rn by some matrix A. Now the next question, then actually what does it look like that matrix A? And also it's giving information about this, that matrix A, the columns will be just T of E1, T of E2, T of Em. And what is this T? It's given here, right? It's given here, this transformation is given here. So how do you prove this? Uh, proof and let's say we are given these standard unit vectors okay these are all from n dimensional space that means that they have n components the first one actually you are familiar with this one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero zero and here the last component is one the rest of the components are zeros okay and also let's say we are given a vector from n dimensional space it looks like x1 x2 x3 xn right now also as you know that actually since these are this form basis by the standard unit vectors every vector from rm it can be written as a linear combination of these vectors so this x we can write it as and here we know these components are something like this x1 x2 dot 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 and here we have xn right equals you can just write it as x1 e1 plus x2 e2 dot 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 plus xn e n right okay now we also know that actually also from chapter three the theorem what is this that is t of e1 or t of e2 dot 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 and t of e m what are this actually these are column vectors in rm right well how do you know that because this one is taken from rn to rm if you just apply this transformation to e1 this e1 is from rn by is taken to Rm. Each one is here. These are column vectors in Rm. Right. So now let's say the columns of A are this. Okay. So here we have T of E1 dot 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 T of E2 dot 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 here. And here we have T of E N. Right. So now, if we ha have this transformation T of X, right? What is X? X is this, right? And also X can be written as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors. So I can just write here. Here we have X one E one plus X two E two plus dot dot dot. And here we have plus uh, X N E N, and also we know that this T is a linear transformation, right? Since it's a linear transformation, and I'll just use this property. Actually, in general, to be a linear transformation, it must hold this property T C one times U plus C two times V is equal to C one times T of U plus C two times T of V. It's just a combination of those two properties. So here we have x1, it's a scalar, e1 is a vector. So I can just write it as x1, and here we have t of e1, plus the second one, C, x2 is a scalar, x2, and here we have t of e2, plus dot, 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 and here we have xn, t of e, f. And now, can I just write it as a product of two matrices? And here, these are column vectors, right? These are column vectors from Rn, here from Rn. So I can just write it as something like this, T of E1, right? T of E1, dot, 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 and T of E2, dot, dot, dot. And here we have T of En. And here I can just write here x1, x2, dot, dot, dot. Here we have xn, right? x1 times the first one plus x2 times the second one plus x3n times the third one. I'm just using this dot, dot, dot because they are partitioned, right? Each one is a column vector here. 
Now, what is this thing? What is this thing actually? Here, that thing is just A, right? Because we denote it by A, that is matrix A equals, and how about this vector that is just X, right? Okay, that is as required, that's the proof of this theorem. So immediately let's see one example. And then we have two examples. After that, I will finish the class. Show that a rotation about the origin through an angle theta defines a linear transformation from R2 to R2 and find its standard matrix through an angle theta. Actually, through an angle theta, um, find its tra standard transformation. Okay, using this one, if you're just talking about any vector, right, let's say this V, whose components are x and y we know that i can just write it as x times e1 plus x times e2 right so that means that if you just know how actually the effect of this transformation on e1 and e2 then we can just write it is standard matrix how standard matrix will be uh, it is just a it will be here t of e1 and t of e2 okay so now, again, from the trigonometry, if you remember, in a unit circle, right, if you're given any point here, let's say any point here, this, this, our, the first point, let's say this, 1, 0, right? That is our, not 1, 0, just, I feel like I can just take it as a vector. And if you just take this as a vector, it is E1, right? If you just rotate this 90, uh, 30 degrees, for example, here, right? It will be here. So this angle is theta. And what will be the coordinates of this uh, vector? The coordinates will be, what is it? The coordinates will be cosine of theta and the sine of theta, right? So that means that, that, means that this transformation, that if you rotate this 90 degrees, what we have here is one zero, one zero, that's E1. And it is image will be cosine of theta and the sine of theta. And how about the second one? How about if you talk about this vector that is E sub two, right? Whose coordinates are zero and one. If you rotate this theta degrees, it will come somewhere here. So this angle is theta. Now, actually, this forms a right angle triangle. So R theta of 0, 1, right? And from here, you can just evaluate this. It will be, it will be, what is it? Minus sine of theta. And here we have cosine of theta, right? How do you know that? Because this one is, you can just consider this thing as 1 AD minus theta, uh, sorry, that one is maybe 90 plus theta. 90 plus theta, we know the cosine of 90 plus theta, that is minus sine of theta, and sine of 90 plus theta, that's equal to cosine of theta, okay? So now that is E1, that is E2, right? Using the previous theorem now, I can just combine them, then this R theta, right, that matrix or uh, I can just write it as a matrix, or let's say it is a uh, standard matrix of this R theta, let's say it is A, it will be, or is it T of E1, but here it is not T, we just use R, actually in a way it's a transformation, R theta of E1 and the R theta of E2. So which is, what is R theta of E1? That is cosine of theta and the sine of theta and r theta of e2, that is minus sine of theta and cosine of theta. So that means that if you just uh, given any vector, for example, here we have a bird here, right? And if you just want to rotate this theta degrees to the left, for example, this theta can be anything, it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. Actually, just transform this picture into this position, right? To do this one, 
we should multiply this vector by this matrix. Okay. Show that the rotation about the origin through an angle defines the linear transformation. And here from here, as I say, just a uh, matrix transformation, then it is a linear transformation. Okay. Last two examples. Guys, I'm going to stop here. Okay. And I will make a bit more media video about this. Maybe tonight I will share with you. Okay. Uh, just keep studying for chapter 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 5, 6. If you have any questions today or tomorrow, you can just share with me. I'll try to make a video and share with you, or we can have discussion. And also, it's fine. That's enough for today. See you soon. Bye bye.